Match number six. I told you guys last week that this could possibly steal the show, and I'm not ready to say it's done that yet. I have two more matches to watch, but let me tell you, it's been my favorite so far. I absolutely love, cherish, and adore this match. This is everything wrestling done, right? This is everything I'm looking for in a match. This is everything flippy, divey fans are going to hate, and that makes me love it even more. This is a contest between two men trying to use not only their strength and their wrestling ability, but their sheer will to win this match in advance on to the replacement for Timothy Thatcher in the N1 Victory Tournament coming up in just a few days, the first round of it, on August 11th. This is Yoshiki Inamura versus Kenya Okada, two of the best young guys in the business by far. Um, Yoshiki Inamura just coming off the fire festival, festival and uh wrestle one i believe it's called i've only seen it once or twice in my life it's not a bad company i just i don't have any way of following it regularly not that i can find and uh got to the finals but lost so maybe something was taken out of him here for this after going through that long grueling tournament maybe but you couldn't really tell by watching this let's get into it Start with a handshake. These guys came into the dojo right around the same time, if not the exact same time. Yoshiki Inamura there in the singlet is has been incredible. He's and Kenya Okada has been been really really good, but just can't get a big win. Just can't get a big win for some reason. Um, but Inamura has gotten a few wins. He has moved up. He has looked good. He has had some great tag team action. Okada's a little behind him in their class, basically, but. Still great wrestler. Started out with both guys just trying to take each other down. I mean, that's what we're going to get. We're going to collar an elbow. We're going to get some taking each other's backs. We're going to just try to get positioning to start this matchup. And that is what the smaller Okada attempted to do, as you can see, with Inimura blocking him by just basically grabbing his head and trying to take um, head and neck control. And if you have you control somebody's head and neck, you're going to control them. Um Okada actually dropped down and thought that might be wise. Maybe he could give him a fireman's carry. Maybe he could do something. But Inamura just put all his weight on him and stopped that. So they're back up and they bent over. Collar and elbow tie up here with Okada taking control. And yes, yes, his name is Okada. For those of you who might be new here, um, same as Kazuchika Okada's last name, not related. And yeah, you probably got a little bit of uh, work to do if you're going to keep the name Okada in the world of professional wrestling. There's also, or there was, an Okada in all Japan pro wrestling as well. None of them are related. It's just a fairly um, common name in Japan. But here you see Okada getting control, getting wrist control. He's got Yoshiki Inamura's left arm and left wrist in a ringer controlling it, you know, just manipulating that wrist. And this is going to be a theme of this contest. If you like Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson, Lars Anderson, if you're a fan of the of the Anderson family like me, you're going to love this because this is what Okada did. He sought out a body part and he stuck with it and that is the left arm and the wrist of Yoshiki Inamura and it makes sense because he's a bigger stronger guy and if you can take out one of those big you know cannons he's got hanging off his shoulders it's going to be a good thing now Okada gets behind him you can see even though this shot's a little blurry Inamura is frustrated Inamura is annoyed by this it's working you know he, he's got control of his left arm and Inamura doesn't like it uh, he does swing around and grab Okada's head and you'll see this is a big response from Inamura as well. He will try to manipulate and move Okada around by just the headlock. But Okada's out of it, gets control of that left arm, and rides the bigger, stronger Inamura to the ground and begins lowering the boom with right elbows to the arm and the elbow joint of Inamura, taking him down again in the arm bar and just controlling him on the ground, showing Inamura you're bigger and you're stronger, but I got control of you here. Uh, Inamura does get up and reverse it and get, gets the go behind, but Kenya Okada flips him over with a fireman's carry and goes back to that left arm, this time straddling it, jumping up and coming down hard on the arm shoulder region. Here we've got Inamura responding with a headlock, trying to just pop Okada's head as if it were a pimple, trying to show him, no, you aren't going to do this. But if you notice, take a look at this, you can see... He's got his left arm, and Amira does, wrapped around Okada's head. That is the arm and Amira has been working on. So this probably shows you that Inamira has looked at tape and figured out that this is the arm he uses in this type of maneuver, and if he can weaken it, he'll be able to withstand this kind of a move. And he did so. 
Now, I love this. Uh, this is a little thing, but professional wrestlers far and wide, and I know there are wrestlers who listen to this show. I know there are. There have always been wrestlers, friends of mine in the very least, that listen to my shows. I love little things like this. You know when a wrestler has somebody in a headlock, and they back him into the ropes and they throw them off, right? That's what was attempted to happen here. He did not throw him off. Inamira held on, went with him to the ropes, bounded off into the next set of ropes to the back to the other set of ropes while still holding on and slipped between the top and second turnbuckle while holding on to the headlock. I love that type of stuff because you just don't see it. Uh, wrestling has gotten so, so patterned, you know, headlock, rope, toss out, toss off, drop down, leapfrog, monkey flip, you know, that type of shit. And it's almost like do a timer. I've said before, duh, 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 duh. wrestle. Uh, uh. Uh, and they're doing move, 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 move. Stuff like this throws that off. Stuff like this says, no, no, no. The wrestling is not fixed to that degree. We do not paint by numbers in professional wrestling. And I love it. It's a simple little thing, but it makes the world of difference. Now, they're, they were broken up there because they were in the ropes, and they're back to square one here. And Amira goes back to the headlock. Uh, they wind up on the canvas where Okada... Comes out of it with the head scissors, but Intermira busts out. They're back to their feet, and you can see the look on Okada's face here as he's getting tossed. He has um, Intermira in an abdominal stretch. It doesn't last that long until he's tossed completely off. Intermira comes back with what he is known for, or I mean Okada, excuse me, what he is known for, and that is these kicks. He is just an incredible kicker. He's One day he's going to be up there with someone like Nakajima and Keno. He is that, just that powerful kicker. And so he goes to his strengths, to the stomach, to the sternum, to the chin area of Yoshiki Inamura, taking him down, but then quickly, quickly going back to that left arm, driving a knee in it as he grasps his hands, and then dropping his right leg across Inamura's left arm. Because even though Okada went back to the kicks to gain some control back, he did not forget his game plan by working on that arm. He then takes in a mirror and drives him left shoulder first into the turnbuckle, just continuing to damage that arm, and then comes in with some back elbows on that same left shoulder joint. And Amira does charge back out, knocking Okada down, scooping him up, and throwing him down in a slam. You may not be impressed by this, but Yoshiki Inamura has some of the best body slams in the world of wrestling. He just really picks guys up, and even though he only has him one-armed here, he would use both to throw him down. He doesn't, again, it's not like wrestling and like, oh, body slam. Like, you know, you picked up a blanket off your bed and just ah, threw it on the ground. You're not going to make the bed right now. No, this guy body slams with a purpose, and I absolutely love it. Um, Nimura tosses Okada into the corner. He comes out, he takes him down, and delivers a big elbow to the small of Kenya Okada's back. Picks him up, slams him down again with one of his terrific slams, locks in the Boston Crab. Now, if you're familiar with young boys, young guys in these dojos and such, many times when they lose matches, it is to the Boston Crab. I don't know the significance behind that. I probably should, but I do not. I'm going to say that, you know, working on your lower back is a region that is a region of your body that takes some time to to get under control. And when you're young and new in wrestling, giving up due to lower back strain and pain is, you know, you're going to be quicker to do that in just about any other body area. So Inamura is trying to get the tap out victory here. Of course, look at the face. Look at the face of Kenya Okada, the strain and, and, and the pain that he is under as he works his way to the ropes. When he first makes the ropes, Inamura pulls him off. See, here in Noah, you don't just, Touching the rope isn't enough. You've got to be in the ropes for the referee to break the count. So Inamira pulls him away quickly and keeps the the hold intact. But a second time, Kenya Okada works his way and really gets, you can see his chin is even under the bottom rope and the, and the hold is busted. Inamira comes in with big axe handles to the back, throws Okada into the corner, but is met with an elbow when he comes charging in. Inamira can throw with the best of them. His blows are incredible, so he knocks the living sense out of Okada with a blow and throws him into the ropes. But as Okada comes off the ropes, he delivers a stunning drop kick, and both men are down. Both men are showing the wear. But look at Kenya Okada holding his lower back, showing you the pain that he's in. Look at um, Inamura grasping his sternum where he was just kicked by a by quite a large man with big legs. 
And speaking of those big legs, as they come to their feet, Okada then starts playing in those kicks. Look at this one. That's that's right under the chin there to Inamura. Throws Inamura into the corner, flies in with an elbow, flies in with a knee, tries to suplex Inamura out of the corner. Doesn't work. Inamura reverses it and nails a big suplex slash Japanese brain buster on Kenya Okada. Puts him in the corner, flies in with a big clothesline. Another scoop slam. And he goes for the splash, but Okada rolls out. Ro Okada rolls out of the way of the big body splash. And Yoshiki Inamura is down. And Okada's back to his kicks. Because Okada's game plan here was to take out the left arm of Yoshiki Inamura. And, but when he lost control, whenever he wasn't in control of that arm, use his infamous kicks to wear him down and get back in control of him. Didn't work this time. Inamura floors Okada and this time hits the big body splash, but he doesn't get the pin. This has frustrated Inamura all match long. He's been in a position where he feels like he could, should have gotten the tap out victory or the pinfall victory, and Kenya Okada continues to survive. So here Inamura is backed up, ready to charge like a like a rhino, like a bull, as Kenya Okada gets back to his feet. But as as Inamura comes in, Okada meets him with a massive kick. Look at the look at the face of Inamura here. Um, this time. Okada does hit a big bridging suplex here. You can see that and goes for the pinfall, but it's not enough. Okada is up. He is focused. He is driven. You can see Inamura getting ready to rise from that big suplex, that bridging suplex that did not bring the victory. And Okada starts sinking his kicks in once again. And Inamura fights back with forearm smashes and a running power slam. And I thought this had to be over here. Look at that. That was a massive shades of the Davy Boy Smith British Bulldog running power slam on Kenya Okada but Kenya Okada rises frustrating Inamura again who comes in and just it's a shoulder block but folks he pretty much just threw his entire body at Kenya Okada you could see the annoyance and the frustration all match long on Inamura because he could not take this guy out he was taking him down he was punishing him, but he couldn't hold him down for the three count. And here he just throws his entire body like a hockey check into Kenya Okada, who goes down. And as here, as Kenya Okada is starting to come to, starting to rise, Yoshiki Inamura decides he's putting this kid away. And he's going to run back and forth, back and ropes to ropes, ropes to ropes, ropes to ropes, just building up momentum. I'm guessing he's going to just give another hockey body check style move or maybe a sliding clothesline something like that but kenya okada catches him in the midst of bounding back and forth between the ropes and and rolls him up like this in a bridging roll up and ladies and gentlemen kenya okada gets the biggest win of his career incredible stuff look at the look at the shock on yoshiki inamura's face he cannot believe he was just defeated by kenya okada yoshiki inamura will not get the opportunity to be in this year's N1 Victory Tournament, it will be Kenya Okada who will get it. The very emotional, very elated, very excited Kenya Okada moves in to the most prestigious heavyweight championship tournament in the world, the N1 Victory. Yoshiki Inamura shakes his hand. It was pretty quick. I had to get a quick screen cap of this. He wasn't pleased, but he did shake his hand and congratulate him, as everybody in the world of wrestling should do. Congratulations, Kenya Okada, on a gigantic win. Now, folks, there have been people, including Manabu Soya, who have gone through the entire N1 victory tournament without one win. The whole tournament with zero points. Now, am I predicting that for Kenya Okada? No. I'm just telling you that. It's a possibility. This could be a great moment for him. It could be very emotional for him and for us, fans of pro wrestling, no, and of Kenya Okada. But that does not mean he's going to go into this tournament and pull all kinds of upsets. I, there's no way he's winning. I'm sorry. There's just no way. Um, I don't even think he's going to come close. Um, maybe he'll get a win or two. Maybe. But this is filled with the greatest heavyweights in the world. So, again, not predicting it. But don't be shocked if Kenya Okada, while getting in this tournament, doesn't win one single match. You can't, you, you cannot believe that this big win means anything other than congratulations for this big win and getting into the tournament at least. Because this is Pro Wrestling Noah, the toughest wrestling organization in the world. But congrats, Kenya Okada. Congrats, brother.